Hi, I'm Tony, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to connect the Reolink RLC 410 5 megapixel camera to Synology's surveillance station. If this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. That being said, let's hop over to the computer and get started with today's video. We're at Synology's website and I'm on their surveillance page. If you're not familiar with Surveillance Station, it's a software package available on the Synology NAS that allows you to use the NAS as a surveillance NVR. Some of the features include live view and alert, recording and playback, vast camera support, and there's over 7,600 IP camera models that are supported by this software. You have diverse device integration, easy management where you can set your privilege settings, action rules, notifications, and more. It supports Android and iOS mobile apps, and also has a visual station, which is a hardware device designed to help you monitor surveillance station without a PC. It's also a great way to set up TVs. If you're wondering what NAS can be used as an NVR, they have an NVR selector here. So if we click on this, you can see here, you can specify the number of cameras, the days to store, recording. You can specify all these different options, and then it'll recommend what NAS would be right for the job. So for example, if we wanted a four camera system, 30 days store, that's fine. Recording 24 seven with no HDMI output, 1080 resolution at 15 frames per second. And you click on recommend. You can see here, it'll give you a list of devices that are compatible with those specifications. Let's do another one. Let's go up to a 16 camera system. Let's go to 4K resolution, 30 frames per second. And let's say recommend. And you can see here now, here's another list of results that would be compatible with these features. With these recommendations, we had the HDMI output set to no, but if you want the ability to be able to plug in a monitor or a TV directly to the back of the NAS, select yes, and then look at your recommendations. And Synology actually has a dedicated NVR that only supports, though, up to 12 cameras, but it does have the ability to plug a TV or a monitor into the back via the HDMI port. Let's get started by installing Surveillance Station on the NAS. Now, for this video, I'm using a DS216 Plus 2, and I've upped the RAM to 8 gig. Let's come on up to the Package Center. Let's go to All Packages. Under the All Packages drop-down, let's click on Surveillance, and you see Surveillance Station comes up as the option. Let's click on the Install button. Next, let's enable these options here so that users can go directly to Surveillance Station in a new browser window without logging into the DSM. Let's go ahead and click Next, and we're just confirming our settings. I'm going to leave it to set to run after installation. Let's go ahead and click Apply. Okay, Surveillance Station has completed its installation. Let's go ahead and click on Open. Here you can see Surveillance Station opens up and it looks very much like the NAS interface except that you can see here all the applications are particular to Surveillance Station itself. So you can see here we have a live view. This is where you can view your cameras live. Now obviously we don't have any cameras set up at this point, but here's where you can come in and set your different live view formats. You have a timeline view. You have your management of your IP cameras, and we're going to use this module here to get our Reolink RLC 410 set up. You can view your recordings, and then you have other applications that are available to use with Synology Surveillance Station here in the Application Center. But for the purpose of this video, without getting too far off topic, let's go ahead and load the 
IP camera module. And the first thing it's asking us to do is add a camera. So let's go ahead and click on add a camera. Now we can also click on add a camera here as well. I do have the real link bullet cam plugged into my switch. It's booted up and ready to go. So let's continue on with the wizard. You have the option of two setup modes, a quick setup or a complete setup. I'm going to choose the complete setup because it gives us the option of setting the stream parameters and other things like that. So we're going to go ahead and click on next. On this screen, you can input all of the parameters for the camera, but I'm just going to do a quick IP search. Now, for some reason, it doesn't find the camera under the Supported Cameras tab, but under General Interface, it finds the camera. You can see the IP address and the port information here. So let's select that camera and go ahead and click on OK. Now, here we can give it a name, so I'm just going to call it Lab Cam. I know it's a real link, so we're just going to go down and we're going to select real link. And it's the RLC 410 5 megapixels. So you can see just in the real link brand all the different cameras it supports. I'm going to put in the password that I created with the camera in the last video. And we're going to go ahead and click on test connection. And you can see the connection passed the test and there's a view of what the camera is currently seeing. So we'll go ahead at this point and click Next. And here's the part where in the Complete Setup Wizard you get to pick different parameters of the camera. So you can choose the video format. I'm just going to leave this set for now as is. So here I noticed it set the real in camera with a frame rate of 4 frames per second. And to be honest, that's going to leave a real choppy video. So I'm just going to up that to 15. And the bit rate I'll leave at 1024 for now, and we'll click on Next. Just keep in mind the default bit rate for the real link camera is 6144, but that will result in a much larger file size. Let's go ahead and click Next. Now you have options for pre-recording time and post-recording time, so how many seconds you want it to record before an event is triggered as well as after the event has completed. So we're just going to leave everything set to 5 for now. That's fine. We'll go ahead and we'll click Next. Here you can set whether you want 24-7 continuous recording or motion detection. You could set your parameters here. We'll go ahead and for now just leave it set to continuous and click Next. And on the final screen, we're just confirming all of our settings, and we'll go ahead and click Finish. And you can see here now the lab cam has been added. Let's take a closer look at some of the camera options. So if we come into the Edit menu and we click on Edit, you can see here we have the device settings. On the video, we have our stream parameters and our resolution parameters here. If you wanted to change, you can change them here from what we set up during the setup process. You have some advanced options here regarding audio and RTSP. On the recording settings, you have your pre and post recording times. Again, your schedule for either continuous or motion detection. Some stream information settings. A couple of advanced settings for being able to disable recording and rotation, etc. Let's click on Live View. Some stream settings here for live view and for the mobile device. Your options are high quality, balanced, or low bandwidth for both. Under advanced, you have some buffer settings you can set. Under optimization, time synchronization, you can set your time server by the camera settings, by the surveillance station settings, or other network time services. So we'll just for now leave it to camera settings. That's fine. Under advanced settings, you can mirror or flip the view on the screen. You can also set a restart schedule. Under event detection, as far as motion is concerned, you have a detection algorithm source. You could leave it set by camera, or you have the option of choosing by surveillance station. And if you choose by surveillance station, you have the option of creating a mask to designate where you want motion to be detected. So for now, we'll just leave that set to buy surveillance station and go ahead and click on save.
Let's take a quick look at the live view now. So let's click on live view. And here you have different options that you can control. You have your pan tilt zoom if you had a pan tilt zoom camera. You can manage your alerts. You can manage your stream profile information. Again, if it was a pan tilt zoom camera, you can set a patrol schedule. You have digital output control and audio output control. On the actual live view itself, you have instant playback. You have an edit cog. Again, if you click this, it just takes you back into the IP camera settings that we looked at before. You can take a snapshot. Here you can drag and zoom, and this is pretty cool because let's say I want to just zoom in on that thermostat. You can see it brings the thermostat to the forefront. You can pause it. You can control your volume, manual recording, your stream settings, low bandwidth, balanced, high quality by camera settings. You can pop up your camera information. If you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of our other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And thank you so much, guys, for using those Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they certainly do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe, and we'll see you next time.